are now going to dive into the general objections to Jesus Yeshua being the Messiah. Now, when I wrote my five volumes over a period of many years, Answering Jewish Objections to Jesus, I didn't entitle it Answering Jewish Objections to Yeshua, because your average Jew doesn't know who Yeshua is. They've heard about this Jesus, they have objections to Him. So one of the important things we do is introduce them to Yeshua, and things do make a difference. So the, the most basic of Jewish objections is Jews don't believe in Jesus. Jews don't believe in Jesus. Now, if you're a Jew, and that objection is made to you, you're a Jewish believer in Yeshua like I am, well, your first answer is, I'm Jewish and I believe in Him. But then we need to go beyond that. We need to say, do you know Yeshua Himself was Jewish? Did you know that? Do you know that He was called Christ because Christ is the Greek way of saying Messiah, Christos in Greek, Mashiach in Hebrew? That's where we get Christ, that's where we get Messiah from. So He was Yeshua, the Messiah. You know, his mother's name was Miriam. If I talk about the Virgin Mary, mother of Jesus, it sounds very Catholic, very Christian. If I talk about Yeshua the Messiah, son of Miriam, well, it starts to sound a little different. You know what the name of some of his followers were, his Talmudim, his disciples? Yaakov, Yochanan. Names like that, yeah, they, they were Jews, Matai. They were all Jews. In fact, the only followers he had when he was on earth were Jews. And almost without exception, with the rarest of exceptions, the only ones that he taught were Jews. It was after he died and rose from the dead, he then told his Jewish disciples, now take this message to the whole world. So this is an entirely Jewish movement. In fact, there was a big controversy that the New Testament records. Can you be a Gentile and believe in Yeshua? You see... All the first followers were Jews, and he was the Jewish Messiah, and he came for them. Now the Gentiles started to believe. It's like, well, wait, wait, wait. Don't they have to become Jewish first? I mean, this is a, this is a Jewish thing. This is Jewish Messiah, Jewish God. Don't you have to become Jewish first? And, and they actually had a conference about it. They weren't sure. They had a major conference, and they all discussed it. That, you know, actually, Gentiles can believe in him, too. Things have gotten twisted so much to the point that the question for centuries has been, can you be Jewish and believe in the Jewish Messiah? Initially, the question was, can you be Gentile and believe in him? And, and not only so, you know there are probably 200,000, 300,000 Jews who believe in Yeshua's Messiah today? Let me put that in context for you. Maybe you've seen one of these Hasidic groups, the Bavitcher Jews, they go out and they, they tell other Jewish people about about Judaism and they try to bring Jews back to traditional observance and if you're a follower of Jesus, Yeshua, they'll try to pull you away. Some of them are friends of mine, they're very sincere and you see them everywhere. They're a major, major Jewish movement. They're famous around the world. Do you know that they probably have about 200,000? In terms of real hardcore, the Bavachers, the number's probably less than that, substantially less, it could well be. In other words, there are probably more Jewish followers of Yeshua then there are Lubavitcher Hasidic Jews, just to give you a context. Now, that doesn't mean we're right. It just means, of course, Jews believe in him. Plenty of Jews, even famous Jews through history, have recognized who he is. You say, yeah, yeah. But this is what a lot of Jewish people tell me. I was born a Jew, and I'll die a Jew. The answer to that is correct. The question is, what kind of Jew? Will you be a Jew faithful to God? Will you be a Jew faithful to the Messiah? Do you know that according to the scriptures, part of our mission, Psalm 96, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples? Do you know it's part of the mission of Israel to make God known to the nations? I had a friend of mine, an Orthodox Jewish rabbi, come to the ministry school that I lead uh, now in, in North Carolina. And I had him do a talk with our students. I said, hey, talk about whatever you want. He said, well, I want to talk to them about why they shouldn't proselytize Jews. I said, go ahead, talk to them. When he finished, we had Q&A. And one of our students, Dennis from Ghana, said, Rabbi, he said, it was not a Jew who came and told my people about the one true God. It was not a Jew who introduced us to the knowledge of God and helped us turn away from our idols and turn away from our our, our traditional 
way of living which was full of idolatry and sin and so on. He said it was a Christian missionary. How is it then that Jews are being a light to the world? And, and the answer that my rabbi friend gave was in no way satisfactory to this African student. You say, well, that sounds like the Christians. I mean, they go everywhere. And oh, oh, could it be that as followers of Jesus Yeshua, making God known to the nations that this is part of our messianic mission? That when God told us that in Exodus, the 19th chapter is as the people of Israel, that we were to be a kingdom of priests. The priests were the ones that, that worshiped God and, and, and made atonement for sin and things like that. And then instructed the rest of the nation about God. As you read through the Hebrew scriptures, you see that was a major part of their role. Could it be that we, the Jews, have been given that role to make God known to the ends of the earth? What kind of Jew will you be, a faithful Jew involved in this God-ordained task or not? Well, the objection is raised, a person is either Jewish or Christian. I'm Jewish. False dichotomy. A false dichotomy. It, it's like saying, are you a man or are you a Democrat? Are you a woman or are you a Republican? A false dichotomy. It is wrong to think you're either Jewish or Christian. You are born Jewish. No one is born Christian. You say, no, 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 my friend is born. No, no. That's the way we think of it. That's the way our society thinks of it. But you know the word Christian occurs only three times in the New Testament? Only three. You say, oh, it's got to be like everywhere. Christianity, you know, the word Christianity didn't even exist at the time of the New Testament writings. New, Te New Testament writings were completed centuries before the Talmud was put in writing, just to give you a perspective. The term Christianity didn't exist. And the term Christian was not talking about a follower of another religion. It occurs only three times in the New Testament. It occurs in Acts the 11th chapter, Acts the 26th chapter, and 1 Peter the 4th chapter. Those are the only times it occurs. And, and in Acts 11, there were Jews and there were Gentiles that were worshiping God together in a city called Antioch, and they were dubbed Christians. Apparently, that was a negative term, a hostile term used by outsiders to mock them. Oh, the, the Christ ones, these messianics. It, it would be like people who didn't like me calling my students brown eye. Oh, these brownites. Or these brownies, if you like. That, that's what this was. And the term was just one that identified the followers of this one, Yeshua the Messiah. So it was not joining another religion. And again, the first quote, Christians were all Jews and they didn't convert. They didn't convert to a new religion. They just embraced Jesus Yeshua as the Messiah. And you know what's fascinating? In all the disputes that you read in the New Testament and, and some of the Jewish community standing against these other Jews who believed in, in Jesus Yeshua, you know what's fascinating? There's no accusation that they had stopped being Jews. Nor is there any question about Jesus Yeshua himself being a Jew. So the question is not, are you Jewish or Christian? The question is, will you follow Messiah? Will you follow Messiah? And you must enter into this category of being a Messianic or, quote, a Christian. Yeshua himself said you must be born again. You must be born anew. That's why this objection falls short as well. Doesn't belief in Jesus mean you're no longer Jewish? As I understand it, belief in Jesus and Jewish in any form are incompatible. Actually, there, there's a great story about a rabbi, Eastern European rabbi, who had been given a copy of the New Testament. And he was so upset, with, he took the book and, and hurled it in his study. And it fell behind, behind a desk or something, just fell on the ground and laid there for 40 years collecting dust. And, and what got his attention was that as there was persecution of Jews by so-called Christians in his community, this happened in the 1800s, that he noticed other Christians of a different spirit standing up for the Jews and standing against the ugliness of what was happening. And it, 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 got, him, it got him wondering uh, about this, this New Testament. So he picked it up and started to read it to his shock. He said, everything breathes Jewishness. He found pearls of Jewish wisdom. He found insights into the Jewish Messiah. He found insights into the God of Israel. He found expositions of what Torah was all about and for the rest of his life 
became a wholehearted follower of Yeshua, the Messiah. So belief in certain aspects of so-called Christian tradition or church tradition, belief in some of those aspects and being a faithful Jew are incompatible. But when we look at what Yeshua actually taught and what the New Testament actually teaches and what Messianic Jews, Jewish followers of Yeshua actually believe, there's actually nothing incompatible. Now, later Jewish tradition may have moved away from some of these scriptural foundations. Later Jewish tradition, just like later Christian tradition, may have developed away from biblical roots, but when we go back to scripture as our source and our guide, Surely later tradition can't overwrite the words of the prophets. Surely later tradition can't over, overwrite and override the, the words of Moses. When we go back to the original sources that God gave, we see, oh, faith in Yeshua the Messiah, being Jewish, holding to the scriptures, fit like a hand in a glove. There are some who will tell us that this whole Messianic Jewish thing is just one big deception. One big deception. It's just Christians acting like Jews to try to win unsuspecting, ignorant Jews. Nobody with, with, with a working brain, Jewish person with a working brain, could possibly mistake that as any form of Judaism. Now, I'm perfectly aware that Messianic Jews have made some mistakes, and I'm perfectly aware that traditional Jews have made some mistakes. What I want to find out is what is this movement really about? Is it just about Christian missionaries changing their names and disguising things as to put on one big deception to lure unsuspecting Jews in? So you see, instead of a cross in front of the building, there's a Jewish star. Oh, that looks Jewish. And you see, instead of meeting on Sunday, they meet on Saturday. Well, that's what we do in the synagogue. And you see, instead of celebrating Easter, they celebrate Passover. Well, that's what we do as Jews. So we'll go in there. And, and once you're in there, then you find out these aren't Jews, or if they are Jews, they're no longer faithful Jews. They're just Christian missionaries masquerading as Jews. That's what you'll find out. Well, there may be some that do that. There may be some masquerading. But in point of fact, as, as I've met Messianic Jews all around the world, as many of you will attest as you're sitting there, the reason we do what we do is, is because it's pleasing in God's sight. In, in other words, the New Testament never commanded us to worship on Sunday. It's fine to do so. It's great to do so if, if that's what our Christian friends want to do. But if a Jew says, you know, I, I don't ever see that God changed the Sabbath. I find my ultimate Sabbath rest in Jesus Yeshua, but I still set aside one day a week, and that's Saturday. Well, where does the New Testament tell them not to? Never does. How about the holiday of Easter? The New Testament never heard of it. First followers of Yeshua never heard of it. They celebrated Messiah's death and resurrection in the context of Passover. I know plenty of Messianic Jews around the world. If there was not a Jewish person watching them, if there was not a Jewish person to reach anywhere in the world, they'd still live the way they live because that's how they believe Jews should live. Now, within Jewish followers of Yeshua, you'll find many different viewpoints, just like you do from Reformed Judaism or Reconstruction Judaism to Ultra-Orthodox Judaism. You'll find Sabbath observance and not. You'll, you'll find those that observe Kashrut and those who don't. You'll find it back and forth. You'll find the same in the Messianic Jewish movement. But it's not based on deception, it's based on conviction. That's why we have these different views and opinions. What's interesting to me, and I've heard this from quite a few counter missionaries and rabbis, they used to think that the whole thing was just deceptive. But then when they go to the conferences and hear presentations about the Torah and Messianic Jews today and how we relate, and, and when they see Messianic Jews teaching the churches about the biblical calendar and, and, and why not celebrate the death and resurrection of Messiah with us as Jews in the context of Passover rather than a separate holiday called Easter, they realize, oh, this is not a deception. You're doing this because you believe in this as Jews. Fascinating. And the great majority of my Jewish friends in Israel, Jewish believers in Yeshua, before they believed in Yeshua, they, they, they were hardly Jewish. They were very, very nominal. Now they've made Aliyah. Now their kids fight in the IDF. Now they, they, they meet for their Shabbat services Friday night or Saturday morning. Why? Because they're Jews and Yeshua has helped bring them back to their roots. What, what about uh, the, the objection that uh, Jesus is for the Gentiles and if he helps them, great. 
Judaism teaches that the righteous of all nations have a place in the world to come, but for us, the Jewish people, we have the Torah. That's our portion. And you might even say, look, some of those Messianic congregations, they're like all, they're all Gentiles. Even the so-called Messianic rabbi is a Gentile. What kind of nonsense is this? Jesus is for the Gentiles, not for the Jews. Well, first, do you have a problem with Gentiles loving Israel? Do you have a problem with that? If you're a Jewish person, you don't believe in Yeshua. Do you have a problem with Gentiles loving Israel, loving the God of Israel, loving teaching about Jewish things? If you're so upset about hostile anti-Semitism in so-called church history, I say so-called because true followers of Jesus will not be Jew haters. But if that's so grievous, and it should be, isn't it good when Gentiles love Jewish people and love the things of Israel? So you, you have a lot of Messianic uh, congregations with a lot of Gentiles in them. But it's a good thing, not a bad thing, because they feel, hey, this part of our roots, part of our heritage too. But the idea that Yeshua is for Gentiles and not for Jews is completely impossible. Number one, isn't it a bit of an insult? Oh, we've examined things. We Jews have examined things. We have seen that the New Testament is an unreliable book. We have concluded that Yeshua did not die for the sins of the world, that he did not rise from the dead. We have concluded that he's not the Messiah. Either he was an imposter or, or his followers were deceived or they were deceivers or, or the, they made the whole thing up. But either way, we reject him. But it's fine for you Gentiles. What an insult. It's like saying we've tested this food out. We find it dangerous and poisonous. We won't touch it, but feel free and feast on it. First, it's quite an insult to Gentiles even though Judaism does teach that the righteous of all nations have a place in the world to come, it is still an insult to Gentiles to say Yeshua cannot possibly be the Messiah, period. He doesn't fulfill the Messianic prophecies in the New Testament's an unreliable book. Throw it out. However, if you want to follow him, even though he didn't really die for the sins of the world, he didn't really rise from the dead, and he's not coming again, feel free and have your deceived, deluded religion. What? How is that in harmony with Jews being a light to the world? Not only so, it breaks down fundamentally on this level. The entire testimony of the New Covenant Scriptures, and by the way, the term New Covenant comes from the prophet Jeremiah in the Hebrew Bible, Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. But the whole thrust from beginning to end is that Jesus, Yeshua, came as the Messiah of Israel that he was the son of David and the son of Abraham, that he died in harmony with the Hebrew Scriptures, that he rose in harmony with the Hebrew Scriptures, that he's returning in harmony with the Hebrew Scriptures, and that everything he did was fulfillment of Messianic prophecy and bringing to fullness the destiny of Israel and the calling of Israel. If he was not that, then throw him out. The only reason he's the savior of the world is because he's the Messiah of Israel. If he's not the Messiah of Israel, throw the whole thing out. Don't talk about this beautiful religion called Christianity. Don't talk about interfaith dialogue. There is none. The whole thing's based on falsehood. If he is, in fact, the fulfillment of Scripture, then by all means the whole world should believe in him. But it doesn't do to say, well, we reject him, but it's fine for the Gentiles. It's an insult, and it is inconsistent. Some would say the fundamental problem with Christianity is that it's not Judaism. So you can have all your proof texts. You can show, oh, you see, he fulfilled this, he fulfilled this, he fulfilled this, he was born here, this happened, this happened, that's what the prophet said. It doesn't matter, it's a different religious system. Ah, the way Christianity and traditional Judaism have developed, in many ways, their poles apart. But the original messianic faith, the original messianic movement is absolutely Jewish in the truest sense of the word. And when we get into theological objections, we will, we will unpack that in greater depth. Again, just going through general objections. What about the objection that if Jesus was really the Messiah, more Jews would believe in him? Why don't more Jews believe in him? Simple answer. Most Jews have never considered it. Most Jews have never objectively looked at this. Now look, I'll be candid with you. If I say to you, why don't most Christians believe in Muhammad, you could give a similar answer. You could say, well, they haven't studied it. They haven't studied the Quran. They haven't looked at the claims of Muhammad. They feel sure in their own faith, whatever, fine. I, I, I would accept that as, as a valid answer. 
In other words, the fact that a lot of people don't believe a particular thing doesn't make it right or wrong. Just look at, look, look at America today, how much influence the media has. Uh, the, the, the amount of brainwashing the, the media can do by addressing certain subjects a certain way or not addressing other subjects or, or demonizing others and so on, people are so influenced by it and most people don't really dig to find out what's accurate. You read a headline somewhere, oh, you go and report it. Did you hear the news? Well, your average Jewish person has never stopped and thought this through. If a Jewish person says to you, oh, if Yeshua is really the Messiah, why don't more Jews believe in him? Say, well, what about you? How come you don't? Have you studied this? Have you ever read the New Testament? Have you ever sat down and studied the prophecies? Do you know how many Jews do believe in Yeshua today? Uh, are you aware of how even some rabbinic tradition points towards what we believe rather than against it, supports it rather than tears it down? Are you aware of that? Most Jews are not. And it's not necessarily a fault, it's just our background. We grew up believing he's not for us, just like we say Muhammad's not for us. So the fact that more Jews don't believe, what does that prove? And here's another question, what if more and more Jews would believe? What would that mean? If your rabbi came out and said, I now believe in Jesus Yeshua, I believe in Yeshua as the Messiah, would you then believe? If, if, if suddenly it became the in thing to do, and, and a million Jews turned to believe in Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, would you therefore do it? Or would you still say, I, I need to study this for myself? That's the issue. You want to study it out for yourself. You say, no way. No, I will not betray my ancestors. I will not break with the faith of my fathers. Many Jews would say that very sincerely. They've told me, I'm an apostate and the worst kind because my ancestors died rather than believe the things I believe. When, when given the choice of baptism or death, they died. And now, not only do I freely believe these, I try to proselytize others. I try to get other Jews to believe in Yeshua the same way I do. You, a Jewish person says, I will never betray my ancestors. I will never forsake the faith of my fathers. You know what's fascinating though? Abraham, Abraham broke with the faith of his father. Yeah. Abraham's father, when he was Abram, Abram's father, was an idol worshiper. Jewish scriptures tell us that, and, and rabbinic tradition expounds on that very richly. I mean, famous Jewish traditions ab about Abram's father having an idol shop. And, and, you know, one day Abram took the idols and, and smashed them all and broke them as he was working there for his dad and just left the biggest one. And his father said, what happened? He said, well, the idols started fighting. You know, the gods started fighting. And this one, and finally only the, the biggest one was left standing. And he said, he's not God. He's just, we made these ourselves. We made these out of wood and stone. What are you talking about? And then he was ashamed when he realized, oh, oh, these aren't gods. And on and on the stories go. Abram broke with the faith of his father because what his father believed at that time was wrong. If, if you look at some of the major movements in Jewish history, those of you who think Hasidic Judaism is, is good and positive, that created such a terrible breach when it happened in the 1700s that the greatest rabbinic authority of the day, the Vilna Gaon, excommunicated the Hasidic Jews. And, and according to some reports, others deny it, but according to some reports, when he died, there were Hasidic Jews who danced on his gravesite. There was even bodily harm done to some of them. They broke with it because they were convinced that some of the traditions or traditional expressions or way things were carried out had become legalistic. And the truest thing you could ever do for your ancestors is if you see they made a mistake to correct it now. And if there's life after the grave, which I believe there is, then, then your ancestors want you to get it right. If they got it wrong, they want you to get it right. That's why Yeshua said, whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And what he was saying was exactly what Moses told the people of Israel. Even if your, your, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your son or daughter, if they go in the wrong direction, you have to do what's right no matter how costly. It's the same for us. So, so don't get caught up in the emotional issue of I won't betray my ancestors, I won't betray the faith of my fathers. Go back to the faith of the scriptures and the faith of the God of Israel and be loyal to Him. And that's the best thing that you can possibly do for the legacy of your family, for your ancestors. We continue, we'll continue to go through 
some of these general objections to faith in Jesus Yeshua as our Messiah, the Messiah of Israel. Our offer on this program, the best of Dr. Brown's Jewish debates. Join Dr. Michael Brown in three of his best debates and travel along on the journey of discovery as truth is laid out in these powerful DVDs. Watch as Messianic Jewish scholar Dr. Michael Brown, Orthodox Rabbi Shmuley Boteach, and Rabbi Michael Gold argue for two very different interpretations of Scripture in these fast-moving debates. These presentations will provide you with information that will help you answer the questions, Is Jesus the Promised Messiah or not? Is Jesus kosher? And did Jesus really die for our sins? For your tax-deductible gift of $40 or more, Michael would like to send you these three DVD presentations. Did Jesus die for our sins? Jesus, Messiah or not? And Kosher Jesus? Build your faith and learn how to effectively witness to the Jewish people as you learn about the hard questions surrounding the identity of the suffering servant of Isaiah 53 and much more. These presentations will be a treasure to you and your family for years to come. Also, please visit our website or call and ask how you can receive access to our countless free resources, learn exciting information on what is happening around the world and with our ministry today. When you visit our website, be sure to check out our bookstore for the latest videos, books, and more. You may want to join us during an upcoming radio broadcast. Please contact us today for more information. Please remember, this ministry depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the broadcast. You know, for so many Jewish people, they just think, well, Jews don't believe in Jesus. And and that's just another religion. So week by week, we're helping to unfold the truth, what the word really says, what history really says. So I want to encourage you, if you're a Jewish person, you don't yet believe in Jesus, join me on the broadcast each week because it's going to be getting clearer and clearer to you that Jesus is our Messiah. Yeshua is the Messiah of Israel and the Savior of the world. If you're already a follower of Jesus, each week we're going to get deeper. Each week your faith is going to get stronger. Each week you're going to get more and more equipped to share the good news of Jesus the Messiah with your Jewish friends and to deepen your own roots as a follower of Jesus. Don't forget to visit my website, Ask. DrBrown.org. We've got hundreds of hours of free resources there. And then join me next week for the next broadcast of Answering Your Toughest Questions. This has been a paid program made possible by financial contributions to Ask Dr. Brown Ministries from viewers like you in your area. Thank you for your support.